You guys are familiar with The Daily Dozen. I mean, that's probably why you clicked on this video. <laughs> the Daily Dozen is a comprehensive list created by our buddy, Dr. Gregor, which should help us make better decisions when it comes to our healthy eating habits. But the problem is just that the list is actually very comprehensive and very freaking daunting. So a lot of you guys don't know where to start. So I thought, let's give you some starting power and create a free meal plan that you can use that is based on the Daily Dozen of Dr. Gregor. So here's step by step how you can implement the Daily Dozen in your life. Are you ready? Let's hit it. Okay, so let's hop into Chronometer. This is a website and an app where you can track all of your food. And just so you know that this is not clickbait, this is actually the entire meal plan that you can see right here. We start the morning with vitamin D, DHA, EPA and vitamin B12. The daily doesn't only suggest vitamin B12 and vitamin D, but generally Dr. Gregor is a fan of the third supplement, vegan omega-3, which has a host of benefits on the human body. We also drink our first servings of tap water. If your tap water is not sanitized, if your tap water is too much sanitized, you can still opt for filtered water or go for bottled water in that case. What matters is that you get enough water in during the day and I usually set reminders for myself and my clients in this meal plan to make sure that we drink a lot of water. Then we go to our breakfast. You see, the breakfast is a very comprehensive meal of the day. We have oats, which are, a which are a serving of grains. We have soy milk, which makes us bring down the oats <laughs> in a very efficient way. Might even be considered as greens uh, because of the soybeans. We have the seeds, the flax seed, because, because of flax seeds. We have blueberries because of the berries. Yes, nice. A lot of antioxidants right here. Bananas for the fruits, cinnamon for the spices. And in the end, we add some tap water on top. You see, the breakfast here is very freaking comprehensive and I would recommend you to get most of your calories, if you can, in the early morning hours in your breakfast or in your lunch. Why? Because if you have a big freaking dinner, it interacts negatively with your sleep quality. It also is correlated with weight gain. That's why, for example, in the lunch plan right later right here, we have two cups of kidney beans. We have two cups of kidney beans because you need three cups of beans in your day and we have two cups right here and one cup later because your lunch should generally be bigger than your dinner, ideally. Uh, right here, I mean, yes. So we have some brown rice. So we have some brown rice, which is the healthiest version of rice next to red rice. Because we still have fiber in it, we have broccoli, so we, so we have the greens on top, uh, kidney beans, beans, tap water for the water intake, soy sauce for our sodium intake, down here so you want to make sure especially if you if you're active that we get enough sodium then you have mushrooms literally just for personal taste but if you can't hit certain micronutrients the mushrooms are usually a quite good quite good idea yes i like them plus they freaking taste nice if you cook them i hope you cook them because it's important then we go to our pre-workout meal which is a banana quite cool quite simple it gives us some carbohydrates for training glycogen Make sure you hit this about 30 minutes before because then it has effects on your body and on your psyche. If you, if you just eat the banana like two, three minutes before, it's still effective, but it's mostly, mostly suits your uh, brain power because your brain thinks like, oh, we have enough calories so I can extend more calories in the gym. I can go all out. Yeah, that's the magic behind it. Then we go to the post-workout, we have oranges. The reason we have oranges right here is for the vitamin C content, so it's an antioxidant after training, and it gives us some variety when it comes to our fruit intake in our day. Now, I'm generally the banana guy. I eat banana all the freaking time, but if you want to add some variety, then oranges are a good idea. Then you can have a smoothie right here, spinach and soy milk. You can blend them together. It's like a nice tasting smoothie. You can maybe even add the oranges in there and some almonds if you like that. Uh, the, the thing right here is that this has to be as simple as possible. We add the almonds for our daily serving of nuts. So we have 25 nuts here. This also fits our intake for the vitamin E right here. See, most of that stuff comes from the almonds. Over 50%, freaking awesome. 
freaking awesome. We also have tap water again. So in total, the, the water right here is about three and a half liters, which is a little bit above the ground, but I like to drink a little bit more just because I live in a hot climate right here and I train uh, at least four or five times a week. So I have to make sure that I replenish all the freaking water. Then we go to the dinner, which is essentially quite similar to the lunch. We just have a little bit less calories. We have only one cup of kidney beans and we change the mushrooms with a vegetable right here, which is red bell peppers. So technically a mushroom is not considered a vegetable. It's considered a fungi, but because there's some sort of a mushroom picture on the, on the daily dust and I thought, yeah, let's just implement it. Would be cool, would be cool. And again, we have some tap waters in the freaking end. If you want, you can have a pre-sleep meal, which I do for a lot of the athletes that I coach, like a chamomile tea and some kiwis to help you get the good sleep quality in. This was the daily dozen. This is how you eat daily dozen in your, in your life. It's quite, it doesn't have to be very, very hard. It's just, you get used to that stuff to the daily dozen. I try to eat based on this checklist as much as I possibly can. I'm telling you, it's not easy. It's not easy, especially if you if you eat out, uh, for example, but I think it's a very good checklist. The obvious downside with the checklist, or maybe it's supposed to be that way, is that when you're a smaller person, when you're a skinnier person, it's usually harder to adhere to this checklist without being in a caloric surplus, without gaining freaking weight. Reason being is that naturally, you see, with all those daily dozen stuff right here, we had about 2,300 calories and some people might be shorter than me, so they need less calories. So if they would eat with that caloric, with that caloric intake right there, they would gain weight in the long term because they eat more calories than they consume, which means if you need less calories, if you need more calories, then please adjust it based on your needs. If, if you need help with your meal plan, you can contact me at qualitygains.com. We have a plan where you can get a free consultation with yours truly. It can help you kickstart your vegan fitness journey today. Okay guys, until next time. The mission of this YouTube channel is to put veganism across the goal line. If you want to help us achieve that, like and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Let's make food production great again.